The Obesity Association, a division of the ADA, has published new standards of care guidelines for overweight and obesity. Summer Hafida is here with more on the five key recommendations to reduce weight stigma and improve care for people living with overweight and obesity. Pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Certainly. So let's start off with why these updated guidelines were published in the first place. Um, well, obesity is an ever-evolving field. Um, so much is happening now in the obesity space, and it's been quite a while since professional organizations have gotten together with clear recommendations and guidelines for clinicians and policymakers and people on the ground. So the ADA decided that it was time to establish a new set of standards of care in this field that will hopefully be a, a guiding document for um, uh, you know, clinical clinicians and patients and all stakeholders um, moving forward. Is bias still there? Is this something that's still prevalent? And, and if so, what do you hope that these standards of care guidelines will do with regard to that? Yeah, that's a great question. So we made a decision to publish our first chapter on the stigma of overweight and obesity because it's such a pervasive and, and lurking issue, uh, not only among people living with obesity themselves, but communities, societies, and even healthcare. So we made the strategic decision to publish recommendations about uh, stigma of obesity to hopefully uh, remove that, educate people, um, and so that they can be more accepting of what's to come. All right, so let's talk about uh, some of these key five recommendations. And you just mentioned education. Training is one of those recommendations. What can you tell us about the recommendations with regard to training? This is such an important recommendation um, that training must be provided to all clinicians uh, regarding obesity-related stigma. And it's important not only on the physician level, but nurses, uh, medical assistants, everyone who touches the life of a person must be trained on obesity stigma. That facilitates engagement from, from the person living with this disease to seek care. Uh, so that is probably the most important recommendation uh, for, for this chapter. It's interesting that you're talking about not just a physician being trained, but we, we wanna see inclusive clinical environments as a whole. Absolutely, from the administration uh, and healthcare uh, systems, all the way to um, uh, medical assistants and people who are transporting patients, people who are working in the healthcare setting on all levels. They all should be tra um, trained on obesity-related stigma. One of the guidelines is person-centered communication. What does that look like? So person-centered communication means that we do not define a person by the disease that they have. So obesity is a disease, and I know we say it often, but it really is a disease with a distinct pathology, a disruption in a person's biology. So to describe a person with their disease is absolutely wrong. What we must um, say and train ourselves and our peers is to use person first language. So a person living with obesity or a person with obesity in order to remove the guilt, the shame, the bias that accompanies this disease for so long. And we certainly hope that with these new guidelines, it encourages more people to seek help, seek treatment that without these guidelines, they may not otherwise. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.